välttävät niitä. On August 21st, and now we can see it freely, we occupy Czechoslovakia. Ibrahim Asayev from Kazakhstan was a tank driver during the invasion of Prague. I could hear the, the planes in the air and the world shook a lot because, the, of course, the tanks were in Prague. Ivana Dolezalova was 19 years old. In the preceding months, during the Prague Spring, the Czechoslovak government, led by Communist Party head Alexander Dubček, succeeded in passing democratic reforms, widely known as socialism with a human face. To the Soviet leadership in Moscow, this was unacceptable. The ground forces entered first, and then the firing started. And then we understood that we'd landed in a meat grind. Alexander Mitko was with the 194th Airborne Regiment that flew into Czechoslovakia. Before this, we had flown to countries of Warsaw Pact, and we were welcomed everywhere. But this time, it was like, take that. You are facing, at a very short distance, the soldiers who are invading your country. But what you see is faces of young, innocent boys... Uh, you see the confusion in their, in their eyes. You see um, fear. You realize that it's not their fault that they were sent over. They told us to our faces we were occupiers. We said, how can we be occupiers if we're just carrying out our orders? What do you mean occupiers? Thousands of people gathered outside Czechoslovak radio to protect this source of uncensored news. It was clear that once they get hold of the media, um, the country might be pretty much lost. Of course, it did then turn into a much more violent uh, act. Then I disappeared. I didn't want to get killed. Later in the morning, the Soviets uh, ran into the building. They did find the studio. They were on the air, and uh, they stopped the broadcasting. Pavel Pechacek was a producer at Czech Radio. Then what happened, it was uh, almost a miracle. Russians didn't find small studios of Czechoslovak Radio all over Prague. People destroyed names of the streets on the walls of Prague. It was difficult for Soviets to uh, really uh, know where they exactly are. They were broadcasting for a number, number of days underground. There was, though, uh, this incredible solidarity amongst people who went to the streets and who started um, basically negotiating with the Russians. There was also a little bit of fun, of course, this nation has that in its veins. We had these banners or slogans like, you know, Ivan, go home, Natasha is waiting for you, and stuff like that. Some people uh, claim that uh, Czechs and Slovaks were rather cowards, that they didn't fight. And I have to say, it's not true. In such cases, like 1968, Czechs were, I think, brave enough. After 24 days, the Russian tanks withdrew, but Moscow was back in charge. Retrospectively, I think it was inevitable, and I think it was naive to think that Brezhnev would not, would let it happen. We can say that Soviets had to come. We hoped they will not. But somewhere inside, we had feelings they probably finally will, and they did. That was deceit from our part. We felt it. I was left with a bitterness in my soul. 
Why did they get into this? They basically hadn't done anything wrong. Thank God, those days are over. <laughs>